Hey, welcome back to Your Money, Your Wealth. Joe Anderson, Big Al, talking about formulas for retirement. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Hey, we're gonna break down spending. One of the hardest things that a lot of people do as they approach retirement is A, how much money are they spending? And before we get to that, let's go to the true false question. Life expectancy has increased by 10 years since 1950. True or false? Hmm, let's see about that. Well, it seems like maybe we're living longer, but maybe there's more pollution, hard to know. More pollution, you're going green on me. I am. <laughs> so in 2050, so right now the life expectancy is 79 years old. Um, in 2050, it's gonna be 83. So we're jumping a couple of years. And I think more importantly is what it looks like if you're at retirement age. If you are 65 today, Right, so males live on average to 83 years of age, and females at 65 live to 86 years of age. So when you're planning retirement, you might wanna think about planning longer than these, than these ages, because actually another way to think about this is a couple that's 65, on average, one of them lives till age 92. So it's a good idea to plan into your 90s. And so there's the good and the bad with that. The good is that we're living a lot longer. The bad is that we're living a lot longer, right? The money needs to last that much longer as we continue to have longer and healthier lives. So as you're doing your overall financial planning, it's like, all right, well, I mean, if we knew when we were gonna die, the planning is really simple. Uh, what makes it challenging is that we don't know when that day is gonna come, and so you wanna plan conservatively just to make sure that that money lasts. You know, there's a couple rules of thumb here too that people think about is that A, I wanna leave a legacy to the next generation, or I wanna bounce that last check to the mortuary. So depending on what your overall goals are is gonna depend on how you think about life expectancy and how you think about your overall strategy. So when we look at spending is kind of the key number here, Al. You know, this is stating another rule of thumb that people will spend less in retirement. You and I have been doing this for more than a couple of years. I would say more people spend more money than less. Yeah, the people that have it. So that's, I think, so the, the, when, you, when you go, when you watch financial shows or you read financial articles, a lot of them say you're spending times 80%. That's what you're gonna spend in retirement. And maybe that works for some people. Our experience is some people spend a lot more. Our experience is some people spend a lot less because they don't have the income. So this is something where you have to give it a little bit of thought. I think, first of all, Joe, you gotta figure out what you're spending right now what you like your retirement to be and then what's possible. Yeah, I mean, there's things absolutely that you're not gonna probably spend money on. You're gonna save money on FICA tax. You might m save money on gas if you have a commute. You might save money on you know, suits if you have to wear suits or, or work clothes. You know, but that usually gets replaced with health care costs, travel, you know, different things that you're doing to potentially your house, upgrading certain things. So yeah, breaking down your spending is key because if you underestimate this number, it could really blow up the overall retirement. If you think you're going to spend 80%, but you're spending 120% of what your current living expenses are, the money's gonna go that much quicker. So this is key of understanding what you're spending. Another way to think about this is the retirement smile. <laughs> I know you love this one, Chef. So what the concept here is go, go, slow, go, no, go. Go, go years, you retire, you're traveling, you're, you're playing golf, you're doing whatever, you're spending money, right? It's fun. And then slow go, you're doing a little bit less than that. Maybe you're not spending as much, but then you go to no go years, you're not really traveling, but your health care tends to be a lot higher. So think about your spending in which phase of life you're in. The go go years, the slow go years, and the no go years. You know, so you got the retirement smile. So you're happy the whole time in retirement. Well, it, it, I don't know. Am I going to be happy if I got a no go? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. You know, I'm going to go go all the way through. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. All right, here's a 4% rule. You have to be careful with this 4% rule. Um, a lot of people throw this thing around. It's a guideline. It should just tell you how much money that you should have roughly as a nest egg. It doesn't necessarily have to do with your spending, right? You don't wanna take out any more than 4% out of your portfolio is really what this is stating. So if you have a million dollars, the 4% rule is that you don't wanna pull out roughly more than $40,000 a year. Right. Because the assumption is, is that you're growing the portfolio at six, 
right? You could take $40,000 out, which is four, then you get a little bit for inflation, and then that money should last you through retirement. But this is just a rule of thumb. This is not a financial strategy by any stretch. I think the way I think about this, yes, it's, a, it's kind of a guideline. But the idea, I guess, is that the $40,000, the 4%, let's say you got a million dollars, you start at $40,000, that's not a static number because your portfolio is going to change. And the idea behind the 4% rule is that you're making more than you're spending, it's growing, so you're pulling out more each year, adjusting for inflation. Yeah, if you think about the opposite, it's like, man, I need $40,000 roughly to live off of in retirement. So how much should my nest egg be? Well, if I want to spend $40,000, I need to grow the nest egg by a million dollars. But you're not going to pull $40,000 out per year. If the market goes down, you might have to pull out a lot less. If the market goes up, potentially you could spend a little bit more. So you probably want to make sure that you have a dynamic spending plan. This is more for, in my just humble opinion, the 4% rule should be used as kind of an accumulation guideline. A lot of you don't have complex financial planning software or even a financial calculator to help you figure out what this number should be. This is really simple. Most people don't know this number, so if you just do the simple calculation, at least you know roughly how much that you should have in that nest egg as you retire, depending on your spending needs. Let's talk a little bit about Social Security, and just so you understand the concept. The way this works is the less you make, the higher percentage of your salary you'll receive very low earners, they'll get about 78% of their salary in Social Security. They don't define what that is. If you're making a little bit of money, Social Security will cover more of your income needs. If you're making a lot of money, it'll cover less of it. Yeah, and then you wanna take a look at, all right, well, when do you wanna claim your benefit? You could claim it as early as 62, or you can wait until age 70. The earlier you, you claim, of course, you're gonna receive a lower benefit just because you're getting it that many years early. So in this case, if your full retirement age is 60, and that's if you were born in 1960 or later, is that if you take it at 62, you're gonna receive a 30% haircut on the benefit, right? So if it's $100 a month, it's gonna to go to $70 a month, or $1,000 a month, it's gonna to go to 700. But you're gonna claim that benefit at 62 versus age 67, so you have these many years that you're claiming the overall benefit. Or you might wanna hold off and wait until age 70, then you're going to receive 124% of the overall benefit. So, or anywhere in between. Depends on a lot of different scenarios. It's gonna depend on, do you need the money? Take it early. Do you think the system's gonna be broke? Take the money. Right? If you have longer life expectancy, probably hold off. If you're still working, hold off. So there's a lot of strategies in regards to this. Some people look at this as a break even. If I claim it early, when do I break even given life expectancy? It depends upon the assumptions you use. Most of them, the break even is between about 78 and 82. But to me, it's more important to realize Social Security, it's, it's just a longevity hedge. In other words, if you live a long life, you're going to have extra income. That, that's how we look at it instead of break even. I think that's a better way to think about it. All right. Uh, we talked about spending. We talked about Social Security. How do you combine everything and make sure that you have the solid strategy in place? If you need more help, go to our website, yourmoneyourwealth.com. Click on the special offer. It's our Retirement Readiness Guide. YourMoneyWealth.com, special offer, retirement readiness guide. We gotta take another break. We'll be back in just a second. Ready to take charge of your financial future? Pure Financial Advisors can help. We offer a no-cost, no-obligation financial assessment with a personalized action plan. Make informed decisions on how to get on your best path to retirement. Sign up for our free assessment online at purefinancial.com to schedule your appointment. 